dear students welcome to our lecture series on geography air is a synonym for atmosphere the earth atmosphere is made up of a variety of gases and other particles most of the planets in our solar system and even some of the moons have atmosphere but the atmospheres of these planets and moons are very different from that of the earth important characteristics of earth's atmosphere is the temperature and pressure in last episode we discussed about atmospheric pressure so today we can concentrate on atmospheric temperature and the topic can be studied under the following captions characteristics of air temperature atmospheric layers atmospheric temperature and pressure factors affecting atmospheric temperatures atmospheric temperature and greenhouse effect let us start with characteristics of air temperature temperature is a measure of the degree of hotness or coldness of an object it is actually a measure of the average kinetic energy or speed of the molecules in a substance the more kinetic energy the molecules have the higher their temperature and vice versa air temperature is measured with a thermometer and is expressed using the fahrenheit scale or the celsius scale the kelvin scale is convenient for scientific calculations but it is not used to report the air temperature the envelope of gas surrounding the earth changes from the ground up four distinct layers have been identified using thermal characteristics chemical composition movement and density each of the layers is bounded by pauses with the greatest changes in thermal characteristics chemical composition movement and density occur the temperature of the air is caused by the combination of air water and land working together these three factors heat and cool areas at different rates temperature also varies by the time of day the season or even the year dew point temperature dew point temperature is a measure of the moisture content in the atmosphere and is the temperature to which air must be cooled for saturation to occur when saturation is reached condensation occurs and such things as dew frost or fog may occur the dew point temperature is a good indicator of the actual amount of water vapor in the air high dew point temperatures indicate there is high water vapor content which indicates the air is moist low dew point temperatures indicate there is low water vapor content which indicates the air is dry temperature is used to define the layers of the atmosphere there are several ways of classifying the different layers of atmosphere the most common classification is based on the vertical distribution and variations of temperature in the atmosphere in this classification from the lowest layer to the highest layer are respectively the troposphere the stratosphere the mesosphere and finally the thermosphere the thickness and boundary of each layer are not identical throughout the globe but vary in different time and places let us discuss these layers in detail the earth's atmosphere contains several different layers that can be defined according to air temperature variations in the way temperature changes with height indicate the atmosphere is composed of a number of different layers these variations are due to changes in the chemical and physical characteristics of the atmosphere with altitude according to temperature the atmosphere contains four different layers the first layer is called troposphere the layer closest to the earth surface is the troposphere and it is known as the lower atmosphere 
It is a very important layer to meteorologist because it is the layer that contains all our weather. The troposphere begins at the earth's surface and extends from 4 to 12 miles high. The height of the troposphere varies from the equator to the poles. At the equator, it is around 11 to 12 miles high at 50 degree north and 50 degree south, 5 and a half miles and at the poles just 4 miles high. Sunlight warms the earth's surface and then the surface warms the air above it. As one moves away from the earth's surface, the air becomes cooler. This is why temperature usually decreases with height in the troposphere. Sometimes the air temperature may increase with height in narrow layer. This is referred to as a temperature inversion. Air temperature may also stay the same with increasing height. This is called as isothermal layer. The bottom of this isothermal layer marks the end of the troposphere and the beginning of the stratosphere. As the density of the gases in this layer decreases with height, the air becomes thinner. Therefore, the temperature in the troposphere also decreases with height in response. As one climbs higher, the temperature drops from an average 17 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius at the tropopause. The boundary separating the troposphere from the stratosphere is called the tropopause. Next layer is stratosphere. The air temperature begins to increase with increasing height in the stratosphere. The reason for this warming is that ozone in the stratosphere absorbs ultraviolet radiation. In this region, the temperature increases with height. Heat is produced in the process of formation of ozone and this heat is responsible for temperature increases from an average minus 60 degree Fahrenheit at the tropopause to a maximum of about 5 degree Fahrenheit at the top of the stratosphere. This increase in temperature with height means warmer air is located above cooler air. This prevents convection as there is no upward vertical movement of the gases. As such, the location of the bottom of this layer is readily seen by anvil-shaped tops of cumulonimbus clouds. The ozone also protects life on earth from this dangerous radiation. The stratosphere extends around 31 miles down to anywhere from 4 to 12 miles above the earth's surface. This layer holds 19% of the atmosphere gases but very little water vapor. Coming to mesosphere. Above the stratosphere is the mesosphere where air temperature again decreases with height. The boundary separating these two layers is called the stratopause. The air temperature decreases with height because there is little ozone at those altitudes to absorb the UV radiation. This layer extends from around 31 miles above the earth's surface to 53 miles. The gases including the oxygen molecules continue to become denser as one descends. As such, temperatures increase as one descends rising to about 5 degree Fahrenheit near the bottom of this layer. The gases in the mesosphere are now thick enough to slow down meteors hurtling into the atmosphere where they burn up leaving fiery trails in the night sky. Both the stratosphere and the mesosphere are considered as the middle atmosphere. The last layer of atmosphere is thermosphere. It is separated from the mesosphere by a boundary called mesopause. Air temperature increases again in this layer due to the absorption of solar radiation by oxygen molecules. Thermosphere lies between 53 miles and 375 miles. This layer is known as the upper atmosphere. While still extremely thin, the gases of the thermosphere 
become increasingly denser as one descends towards the earth. As such, incoming high energy ultraviolet and X-ray radiation from the sun begins to be absorbed by the molecules in this layer and causes a large temperature increase. Because of this absorption, the temperature increases with height. From as low as minus 120 degrees centigrade at the bottom of this layer, temperatures can reach as high as 2000 degrees centigrade near the top. However, despite the high temperature, this layer would still feel very cold to our skin due to the very thin atmosphere. The high temperature indicates the amount of the energy absorbed by the molecules but with so few in this layer, the total number of molecules is not enough to heat our skin. Now, let us discuss the relationship between atmospheric temperature and pressure. Temperature is related to air pressure, but the links are somewhat complicated and a real understanding would take into the atmosphere's global circulation and dynamics of upper air movements. As the sun heats the ground or ocean, warming them, the air near the ground or ocean warms and becomes less dense. As this happens, the air begins rising, which lowers the air pressure at the earth's surface. A large area of low pressure created this way is called a thermal low. On a smaller scale, the sun heats up land faster than nearby water, causing the air over land to begin rising sooner than air over ocean. As rising air over the land creates lower air pressure, cooler air from over the ocean flows in to replace it, creating a sea breeze. Very cold air, on the other hand, can create large areas of high pressure because cold air is denser than warm air. People who know about thermal lows and high pressure in cold air often jump to the conclusion that warm air means low pressure and cold air means high. Unfortunately, the atmosphere is more complicated than this. For instance, the low pressure centers of tropical cyclones are warmer than the surrounding air. But the core of an extra tropical cyclone where the low pressure is located is colder than the surrounding air. But the large areas of low and high air pressure that move across the earth as storms and large areas of clearing sky are formed in indirect ways that begin with the unequal heating of the earth by the sun. The sun heats the earth's tropics, the regions on both sides of the equator much more than places farther north and south. This causes large amounts of air to rise in tropics. Humidity in this rising air condenses to form the cumulus clouds and large thunderstorms that we see around the tropics in satellite photos. The area where this is going on is called the intertropical convergence zone. If the temperature dropped from 65 to 30 degrees, the air pressure would be likely to be higher. But this would not be directly because the temperature changed but because an area of high air pressure moved in bringing the cooler temperatures. Altitude affects the temperature of air because air pressure gets lower as the altitude increases. The higher the pressure of any gas like our air, the warmer it becomes. On earth, the air pressure is approximately 14.7 pounds per square inch at sea level. By the time we reach 50,000 feet above sea level, the air pressure is reduced dramatically to about 1.6 pounds per square inch. The pressure is generated by the force of gravity acting on the many miles of air molecules 
that make up our planet's atmosphere. The air pressure is not the same everywhere. However, it can be different at different points on the globe and can even change over time. Now coming to factors affecting atmospheric temperature. The distribution of temperature over the earth's surface depends on following factors. Latitude. Highest temperatures are generally at the equator and the lowest at the poles. The temperature decreases with the increase of latitude. Places closer to the equator are warmer than places at the poles. The climate zones found closer to the equator such as the tropics, equatorial rainforest, and monsoon climates are therefore warmer than colder climates further away from the equator. This temperature variation is due to the curvature of the earth and the angle of the sun reaching the earth's surface. At the equator, the sun is concentrated on a small area and shines directly downwards. This results in higher temperatures here. However, at the poles, the sun is lower in the sky and the heat is spread over a wider area resulting in colder temperatures. Next factor is altitude. Temperature decreases with height in troposphere. Temperature decreases by 1 degree centigrade with every 100 miles increase in altitude. This means that mountain environments are much colder than lowland areas. For example, the Andes in Ecuador are high enough to be covered by snow all year round, despite the location on the equator where it would be assumed to be hot. Altitude is an important factor determining the temperature of continents such as Asia with some of the world's highest mountains. Next is ocean currents. One more factor affects temperature is ocean current. Ocean currents affect the climate of coastal areas. Hot and cold ocean currents affect temperature. Warm currents tend to rise winter temperatures. Colder currents lower summer temperatures. An ocean current change called El Nino affects the world temperatures. It carries warm water across the Pacific Ocean and up towards the west coast of North America. The weather changes all over the world when El Nino starts up. Local temperatures in the western United States increase and rainfall increases. More rain in one area can also mean higher temperatures and less air in other area of the planet. Next is continentality. It means distance from the sea. Water bodies are great moderates of temperature. Because of high specific heat of water, so on the oceans, the regularity in temperature is more as compared to continents. Places in the center of continents will have warmer summers and colder winters than those on the coast. This is because land heats up more quickly in the summer and cools down more in the winter than the sea does. The sea is less dense than land and can therefore be heated to a greater depth. But the sea takes much longer to warm up than the land in the summer. However, once it has warmed up, the sea can retain its heat for longer than the land can. This is why island areas are warmer in the summer but cold in winter than places on the coast. Another factor is topography. Mountain ranges affect the temperature by acting as obstacles to the flow of cold air near the surface and they often set conditions of warm winds. In addition to the above mentioned aspects, there are some other factors affect the temperature of the atmosphere. Those factors include season, wind pattern, formation of clouds and rain, color and slope of the soil and also the forest and vegetation.
Now coming to atmospheric temperature and greenhouse effect. Earth's temperature depends on the balance between energy entering and leaving the planet system. When incoming energy from the sun is absorbed by the earth system, earth warms. When the sun's energy reflected back into space, earth avoids warming. When energy is released back into space, earth cools. Many factors, both natural and human, can cause changes in earth's energy balance. In the past, the earth's climate has changed as a result of natural causes in our atmosphere. The changes we are witnessing and those that are predicted are largely due to human behavior. We are burning fossil fuels and heating up the planet at the same time. We blow ever increasing amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere every year. Since the industrial revolution, humans have been burning fossil fuels on a massive scale. We use this energy almost without care for the consequences to run vehicles, heat homes, conduct business and power factories. Burning fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide stored millions of years ago as oil, coal or natural gas. In the last 200 years, we have burned a large part of these stores resulting in an increase in carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. The destruction of our forest also releases carbon dioxide stored in trees and in the soil. The increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere thickens the greenhouse blanket with the result that too much heat is trapped into the earth's atmosphere. This causes global warming, global temperature rise and cause climate change. Solar irradiance. It's reasonable to assume that changes in the sun's energy output would cause the climate to change since the sun is the fundamental source of energy that drives our climate system. If the warming were caused by a more active sun, it is expected warmer temperatures in all layers of the atmosphere. Instead, they have a cooling in the upper atmosphere and warming at the surface and in the lower parts of the atmosphere. That is because greenhouse gases are trapping heat in the lower atmosphere. Coming to gases that contribute to the greenhouse effect include water vapor, the most abundant greenhouse gas, but importantly, it acts as a feedback to the climate. Water vapor increases as the Earth's atmosphere warms, but so does the possibility of clouds and precipitation, making these some of the most important feedback mechanisms to the greenhouse effect. Next is carbon dioxide. A minor but very important component of the atmosphere, carbon dioxide is released through natural process such as respiration and volcanic eruptions and through human activities such as deforestation, land use changes and burning fossil fuels. Humans have increased atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration by a third since the industrial revolution began. This is the most important long life forcing of climate change. Next is methane, a hydrocarbon gas produced both through natural sources and human activities including the decomposition of waste in landfills, agriculture and especially rice cultivation as well as ruminant digestion and manure management associated with domestic livestock. Methane is a far more active greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide but also one which much less abundant in the atmosphere. Next is the nitrous oxide. A powerful greenhouse gas produced by soil cultivation practices, especially the use of commercial and organic fertilizers, fossil fuel combustion, nitric acid production and biomass burning. Next one is chlorofluorocarbons. 
synthetic compounds of entirely of industrial origin used in a number of applications but now largely regulated in production and released to the atmosphere by international agreement for their ability to contribute to destruction of the ozone layer. They are also greenhouse gases. The consequences of changing the natural atmospheric greenhouse are difficult to predict but certain effects seem slightly. On average, earth will become warmer. Warmer condition will probably lead to more evaporation and precipitation overall but individual regions will vary, some become wetter and others drier. Let us conclude the session. The atmosphere is divided into the layers according to major changes in temperature. Gravity pushes the layers of air down on the earth's surface. This push is called air pressure. There are several factors altering the balancing act of earth's temperature. Instability in the atmospheric temperature can cause serious impact on earth and also life on earth. So students, thank you very much for watching this episode. Hope we will meet in the next episode. Until then, take care. Thank you.